It's got those Radio Shack style colors, the RS Pro RS1 II in the cheapo spotlight. Groovy. A big, massive, cheapo thank you to Leo. This is a shout out to Leo. Thanks so much for sending in the RS Pro RS12 in for the review. What a nice guy. I gotta say, first impressions are this is a nice little cheapo. Um, looks good, feels good, and overall, I think this is gonna be a pleasant experience. Unlike my first marriage. RS-12 ships in this bubble style enclosure. Hey, you know what? I really like these types of enclosures. Probably more so than your typical, you know, cheapo box because those things tend to get schmutzed pretty easily. Uh, let me tell you, uh, uh, no offense, DHL. <clears throat> um, compact digital multimeter, plastic bubble box. You get that nice supercell nine volt battery. And of course the test leads. And as well, you get a couple of instructs, uh, Chinese as well as English. And it's a pretty good manual, all things considered. Um, pretty in depth in multiple languages, but you know what? Considering this is a you know a basic style multimeter manual ranging, pretty sweet. Check out these cheapo test leads too, bundled with the RS12. Wow, nice big long shroud, awesome! Look at that. That sucker is long. Excellent. And the. Uh, probes themselves, Cat 3 1000 volt, Cat 4 600 volt, lose the shroud, lose a cat rating, but you get a little extra usability, and whoa, that is pretty darn pointy. Um, very, very nice, gotta say. Uh, bundle test leads can be hit and miss in the cheapo realm, as you know, but these are definitely a step in the right direction. Now, Leo mentioned that he purchased this from the RadioShack.com website. Uh, no sales pitch here, just telling you how I heard it. Um, it is not a RadioShack multimeter, though. This is an RS Pro by Allied Electronics and Automation. Uh, they're a company based out of Fort Worth, Texas. And they're not a manufacturing company either. No, they're not an OEM, but rather a global distributor of electronics, uh, especially in the Americas. So, uh, yeah, they don't actually fabricate this meter. They basically just rebrand it. So who makes the darn thing? Well, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked it. Well, even though I asked it. The OEM is actually CEM. You heard of them, right? CEM? That's right. There you go. Uh, this is actually a DT912A. Uh, CEM is also known as the Shenzhen Everbest Machinery Industry. That's the name. They've been around for about 30 years, based out of China. And there you go, the Politico on the whereabouts of this meter. Oh, lest I forget, there's also another version from Amazon Commercial, uh, labeled the 90 DM120. Hey, it's the same darn meter. This multimeter feels really good. It has that uh, invisible rubber inlay, but it's there. It's nice. It's really tactile. It's not cheapy, cheesy plastic. No, it has that nice tactile rubber feel. Overall, very nice protective boot. Um, tilt stand, a little interesting. It's got a groove here to push it out. It takes a little doing, but once it's there, you have that kind of awkward angle here. Now there's been reports of interesting viewing angles or it's hard to see, but we'll check that out shortly. But overall for a tilt stand, you know, it's okay. It might be hard to one hand it, but yeah, it's doable. If barely. That's only 2000 counts and no bells and whistles, no NCV, nada, none of that fun stuff. No, just the basic bare bones here. So this is a meter for people who don't want to mess around, who just want to get the basics done. That's what it's here for. At the top of the meter, we have two soft touch buttons, the one touch hold, as well as the backlight. Bottom of the meter, we have our three inputs, high current 10 amp. In the middle, we have our common or neutral. Finally, in the far right, we have our voltage, resistance, and milliamps. Invoking that backlight, and it's pretty big, bold display, I gotta say. Chunky, funky fonts once again. Boy, some of these just OEMs love that chunky font. I don't know, I'm sort of on the fence. I'm more of a, you know, slim font kind of a guy, but hey, that's okay. At least it is definitely serviceable. Now, if we sort of change angles, yeah, it does seem to fade out a little bit. Um, yeah, so you're probably gonna wanna be looking at this uh, if not head on, at least at a fairly decent angle. Otherwise, you're going to lose some of that display. Overall, though, a pretty decent backlight. And I got to say, how long is it going to stay on for? 
hmm, I think about 60 seconds, but uh, we'll soon find out. Now the RS-14, I believe it had a 10 or 15 second timeout in terms of the backlight battery. So this is definitely an improvement over the big brother. Um, and that's a good thing. Well, lo and behold, that backlight stays on indefinitely. So, hey, somebody, thank you, RS Pro. Thank you, Allied. Somebody was paying attention, listening to the end user. I love it. I love a backlight that stays on. Why is it so difficult? Awesome. To turn it off, there you go. Oh, good stuff. Starting off with that venerable DC accuracy test, 5.00. Whoa, beauty, that's exactly what we want and that's what we're getting. Good job, RS12. Size-wise, it's definitely on the smaller side. Wow, it's almost dwarfed by that uh, O1 OW18A. And uh, yeah, you know, this is a good size meter to take on the road, throw it in the glove compartment, what have you. Definitely portability is the name of the game. By the way, that Kaiweets HT112B coming up soon. Kaiweets week, stay tuned for that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Quick DC accuracy test. Hey, we got that super accurate Klein Tools MM600 in for the fun along with the Sanwa PC20. I like that little meter. Alrighty, here we go. Sitting at 12.1 volts. And there you go, 12.12, 12.10, and 12.15. Up and away. Here we go, let's hit 15 volts even. 15.01 according to the Siglent power supply, 15.02. Two for the Klein Tools, 15.04 for the RS Pro, and 15.07 for the Sanwa. Okay, up and away. 22.39 volts, 38 volts actually, according to the Siglin power supply. And whoa, because we are at manual ranging, we're gonna have to take it up. There we go. 22.39 for this Klein Tools, 22.4 for the RS Pro, and 22.47 for the Sanwa. Now remember, the lowest resolution here is the RS12 at only 2,000 counts, so this is when it kind of sucks resolution-wise. Alrighty, let's max it out now. 32 volts, 32.01. 32.01 for the Klein, 32.0 for the RS Pro, and 32.12 for the Sanwa. So there you go, all in all, I'm gonna give that RS Pro a second place finish. I think it was definitely a little bit more accurate than the Sanwa, and um, overall, sitting now in high current amps, 10 amps is where we are, and yeah, we are there, 10.04 amps. No high current alarm or any sort of signifier on the RS Pro letting us know we're in the danger zone but it seems to be taking it just fine. Let's bring it back down, shall we? Sitting now we're on 1.8 amps, looking good. In AC volts now, 121.5 coming up for the RS12. Remember, this is a non-true RMS. It is not a true RMS multimeter. It is a little high. Here we have a true RMS on the right, the Sanwa PC7000 coming in at 120.8 volts. That's a little more like it. Diode LED testing time. Here we go. Starting off with a standard LED, a diode rather. And there's our forward voltage drop. Try that one more time. Should be about 0.575. Seems to be a tad high for some reason. Okay, well, let's go on to the LEDs. Red LED. It is lit. No forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Same thing lit, just barely. Over to the green. It is lit, the blue. Oh, ever so barely lit. And finally, the white. Once again, you probably can't see, but it is just lit, just a smidgen. But no forward voltage drops for any of these LEDs. So five out of five for illumination and zero out of five for the forward voltage drop indication. Diode output voltage. Oh, it's a pretty low 2.4 volts. Not enough. Hey, 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 it's time for continuity, hey, hey, Oh, that's bad. Here we go, stock default test probes, three, two, one. Oh, scratchy, lot latchy, and not very loud, oh, not very good. Let's try the probe masters, probe masters. Look at that, we have gone from 
Scratchy to latchy. Locked and loaded, baby. And fairly loud. Oh, what a difference these Bromasters make. Sixty-nine point one decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. It's about a C plus. Okay, we're sitting in ohms mode, and I've got the leads together right now, the standard leads, and we've got about point one of an ohm in terms of uh, resistance. So almost perfect, almost but not quite. Let's see how we are in the precision department. I've got an eight point two five ohm, one percent resistor. How low can we go? Let's find out. So 8.4 ohm, not bad, not bad at all. Finally, in a 0.5 ohm resistor, can we get close? And yeah, look at that, 0.6 of an ohm. Take away that 0.1 and there you, we were at 0.5. So in terms of resistance, hey, not bad at all. I'm actually quite surprised this little meter is doing this well. Okay, let's take out the resistance decade box. Have some fun. Now, unfortunately, in terms of resistance, it has a meagly, meagly, is that even a word? A measly <laughs> or meager um, 2000 kilo ohm or two mega ohm resistance threshold. So it's not a lot and not a lot. Um, but hey, let's see what we can get anyway. How fast is it? Well, sitting at one mega ohm right now. Oh, that is painfully slow. Oh my God, that is slow. Wow. Okay, so super slow in resistance department. Let's try 2 mega ohm. Oh my goodness gracious. This thing is a, a, a beast in terms of... Oh my god. For real. What the... Ah! Nuts. Totally nuts. That was like, what, 10, 15 seconds to get to 2 mega ohm? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Whoa. Okay, let's try 100k. Uh, a little bit better. 300k. Uh, that's okay. Uh, okay, let's just try turning it down here a bit. Maybe it'll be a little bit faster. Try 100k again. Not really. Not really. 10k. 11k. 11.1k. Okay, well. <laughs> okay, so... If you do a lot of resistance, you're not gonna want the RS-12. This thing is a total ah! <sighs> In the resistance department, this one really sucks. Oh man, that took a long time. 15 seconds? All right, it's teardown time once again. Here we go. I have to get into that battery housing. We have two Phillips screws and voila, they are secured by a nice, not one, but two brass threaded inserts here. So it doesn't matter how many times you take out that 9 volt battery housing. You're not gonna strip the threads, good stuff. Now let's get on to the really fun stuff. The main PCB. Oh, and before that, of course, no shielding. Hey, you know, <laughs> it doesn't surprise, right? Um, few and far between cheap old multimeters that actually have shielding. Okay, not gonna rant about that right now. Here we go, the main PCB. Whoa, take a look at that. Let's get this annoying 9 volt battery housing assembly out of the way first of all. Look at those input jacks. Wow, bejeez, those are funky. Um, they're not nut or washer, they actually seem to be somehow embedded to those plastic inserts. Um, nice soldering job going on though all around. And I gotta say, pretty decent for a cheapo multimeter. Now, those fuses are five by 20s. Um, we have the high current 10 amp, and the uh, milliamp fuse, 250 milliamps as well. Look at that current shunt, nice and big and chunky. And we have a high current input resistor over here. And oh my goodness, look at that, is that a, it is, it's a trim pot. That's for the uh, voltage calibration. So you can do a little bit of trimming here if you wanna get your meter um, adjusted just so. That's always a bonus. And look at this, we actually have a combination of SMD, as well as through hole components. Good God, you don't see that very often anymore. But yeah, we have a combination. Speaking of combinations, we have one PTC on the voltage side right here at the top. And moving up, look at that piezo. It's a little off center. A little helter skelter going on there, not sure why. Um, but yeah, it's sort of bordering on a resistor. 
But anyway, there we are, the main buzzer. The main IC cobbed, unfortunately. And over here we have one of those venerable LM358 op amps. By the way, you're looking at the main IC right now. That is made from Fortune Semiconductors, the FS9552. Pretty popular in the cheaper realm. Uh, B-Side uses it in a lot of their multimeters as well. All in all, pretty decent attention to detail though. Um, fairly clean. We do have some flux and a little messy over here. But generally speaking, it's a pretty clean layout, pretty clean looking PCB. No bells and whistles once again with this multimeter, so you don't have any NCV, uh, no live wire, nothing funky, not even a flashlight on this RS. One thing I'm not a fan of is that big honk at nine volt uh, battery housing. I, I really don't like how they, you know, just, oh, I just, for me, it's messy. And, you know, this comes up, feeds under the main assembly. And, oh, I really prefer when you have contact to contact. Uh, but in this case, yeah, it's that old fashioned nine volt connector. Ugh. One nice attention to detail, especially on a cheapo, is that easy fuse access. Look at that, those five by 20 fuses are definitely accessible just by removing that battery compartment. Good thing, because otherwise you've got to mess around with four other screws to get in. So easy breezy access to those ceramic fuses. Awesome. Reverse side of the PCB here, we have six pads. That's what makes contact with that selector track. And uh, the soft touch buttons are really nice. Uh, nice rubbery tactile feel. All in all, pretty pretty decent attention to detail, once again, for a cheapo. Now, speaking of rotary selector tracks, goo, yeah, look at that. Nice and big. Um, uh, you, you know, sometimes you can get high voltage arcing and it's good when you have space. Um, uh, it's, it's not bad, you know, it's not bad. Um, no dielectric on the tracks either, but wow, some really gorgeous soldering here. I mean, look at that soldering, just great attention to detail. Nicely done. Nice streams of solder, good beads. Oh, wow. They did a really sweet job when it comes to soldering. Very nice, and those inputs, once again, yeah, they're not going anywhere. Really great attention to detail here. Good job. Uh, main display at the top here, stuck on by four Phillips screws. Nice and big and beefy. Once again, this is a cheapo, so you know, this is all bang for buck here. Bonus, um, just not a cheesy, cheap display. No, they have a nice plastic bracket housing, and uh, you know, once again, uh, it's, it's definitely taken up a notch from what we're used to. And as we mentioned previously, DT912A. So this is a CEM branded meter, just rebranded as the RS name. Alrighty, let's put things back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Ah, closing thoughts on the RS Pro RS12 from Allied. Whoa, what a mixed bag this multimeter was. Good points though. It's a good looking meter. It has those awesome Radio Shack style colors and it is a well-built little instrument. Uh, this thing can de definitely take a fall. Don't worry about it. It is built like a tank. Pretty decent input protection. Definitely not the best. I mean, no mobs to speak of whatsoever. But, you know, that being said, for a $20 cheapo, I've definitely seen a lot worse. Uh, build quality-wise, it was very, very good. Lots of accuracy in the DC department. Uh, it's not true RMS, which kind of bites. But that being said, you know what, for basic everyday tasks, it should do the job. The major caveat for me for this one is that pathetic performance in resistance mode. Oh man, it was incredibly slow. Probably the slowest meter I've ever tested out of maybe what, 400 meters I've tested thus far. I mean, 15 seconds thereabouts for a two mega ohm test. It's just nuts, crazy. So, yo. Know, all things considered, I'm gonna weigh the good with the bad. The RS Pro RS12 gets a solid three out of five stars. Hey, as long as you don't need resistance, it's not a bad meter. It can definitely do a lot worse and it'd be a great one to throw in the trunk or your toolbox for those rainy fun days. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.